and welcome back to the Cracking Fang YouTube channel. Today we're going to be solving lead code problem 772, basic calculator 3. Implement a basic calculator to evaluate a simple expression string. The expression string contains only non-negative integers, a plus operator, a minus operator, multiplication operator, and a division operator, and an open and closing parentheses. The integer division should truncate towards zero. You may also assume that the given expression is always valid and all intermediate results will be in the range of minus 2 to the 31 to 2 to the 31 minus 1. Note, you are not allowed to use any built-in function which evaluates strings as mathematical expressions such as eval. So, if you haven't already seen my video on basic calculator 1 and basic calculator 2, Pause this video and go watch those two because we're going to be using a lot of the same concepts that we used in those videos to solve this question, which is really just a combination of the two, uh, but supremely more annoying because now we have to deal with parentheses and multiplication and division, which just makes everything so much more of a headache. But go watch those videos, come back to this one, and we're going to solve it. So let's look at an example, this atrocious looking string, and we're asked to evaluate it. So, as you can see, the output should be 21, but how do we get that? Well, we know that we need to respect the order of operations. So that means that we have to evaluate everything in the parentheses first. So, 5 plus 5 times 2, so obviously the 5 times 2 occurs first because of order of operations, so that's 10 plus 5. So that means that this entire thing is 15. Here, 6 gets divided by 2, so that's 3 plus 8, so that's 11. So now we have 2 times 15 time, uh, divided by 3 plus 11. So we can do these in any order. It doesn't matter. So we'll divide by 3 first. So that would, this will become 5. So we get 2 times 10. Uh, sorry, 2 times 5 plus 11. So this is obviously going to be 10 plus 11. And we get 21. So that's in theory how we solve this. But how do we actually put together an algorithm? Because it's a whole lot harder to do this uh, in code than it is just looking at it. So let's think about how we can break this down and actually write some sort of solution for it. I, know that I normally go through an example and kind of walk through how we can build out our solution uh, in the diagram with a bit of a drawing, but I've done that and it's really messy and I'm not gonna put it in the video. So what I'm gonna do instead is I'm going to actually write the code out and then perhaps at the end of writing the code, we'll actually just walk through an example uh, and then kind of just go through it as if it was a real problem. We can look at what the variables are uh, and that way it's probably gonna be a whole lot cleaner than me trying to draw it out with my mouse. It just got way too messy, way too ugly and it's not gonna help anyone. So let's actually solve this. Remember that we need a few variables to keep track of our calculation. So we're gonna say that the current number that we're working with, we're gonna set that equal to zero because obviously we haven't processed anything and the current operation is gonna be a plus. And we're also gonna have a stack here which is gonna hold our elements. And in this question, we're not actually gonna be computing the result on the fly as we go from left to right. We're actually just gonna put numbers into our stack um, which at the end can be summed. It's a little bit different from basic calculator one and basic calculator two, where we were doing them in place. Unfortunately, with this problem, you can't do that. Um, you have to use the extra space. And the way that we're gonna do it is we're gonna make it so that at the end, we can just sum all the elements in the stack and that will give us our final solution. So we need a little bit of a helper function to help us with the math here. So let's define it. And this helper function is gonna take an operation and it's gonna take a num. And we just need to basically put things into our stack based on whatever the operation is and whatever our number is. So we're gonna say, if the operation is a plus, then what we wanna do is we wanna say stack append and we're gonna put the number in there. Else if the operation is a minus, we wanna say stack.append minus num. If the operation is a multiplication, then what we wanna do is say stack.append, we wanna say stack.pop multiplied by the current number. And we don't have to unwind, you know, the previous operation when we see a multiplication because again, we're not doing it on the fly. We have it set up that we can actually just uh, add all the elements together. So because we're doing this, we don't actually need to unwind 
the previous result, we can just do whatever the top of the stack is times the current number when we see a um, multiplication. Otherwise, if we have a division, we're actually going to say stack.append and we're gonna put the integer of whatever stack.pop uh, divided by num. And again, we just do regular division and we cast it to an int because uh, when you're doing integer division in Python with negative numbers, it doesn't round correctly, or at least not in the way that you'd want it to. So to avoid that, we actually just use uh, regular division and the integer cast. So now we can actually process our string from left to right like we did with the other basic calculators. So we're gonna say for i in range len s, what we're going to do is we're going to say if s of i dot is digit. So basically, if it's a number, we need to process it. And remember that it's not always just going to be single digits. We can have, you know, multi numbers like one, two, one, one, two, three. So we need to process all the numbers. So we're going to say num, whatever the current number is, times 10 plus the integer of whatever our current value is. So s of i. Um, if we have a left parenthesis, then what we want to do is if you remember in basic calculator one, when we have a left parenthesis, we want to keep track of whatever the current operation is. So that way, when we come out of the parenthesis, we can apply the result of inside the parenthesis with the operator and then the value before it. So we actually need to store that in the actual um, the stack. So we're going to say stack.append, whatever the current operator is. And now we need to actually reset our number to be zero. And we want to reset our operation to be a plus because remember, it's as if we're starting fresh when we enter a parenthesis. Cool. Now, if s of i is actually in, um, you know, a plus, if it's a minus, if it's a multiplication, oops, multiplication, if it's division, or if it's a right parenthesis, then we need to handle um, those operations. So what we want to do is we want to pass into helper our operation and the number. And this is going to take care of handling the actual math for us. And notice that we can actually pass in uh, into operation uh, a right parenthesis. But here you'll see that we actually don't have a block um, to handle that. So it actually nothing ends up happening. Um, so we don't have to worry about passing in, you know, that left parenthesis or the right parenthesis because nothing's actually going to happen. But that is a value that helper can take. Just nothing's going to happen. So now we actually need to handle the case if it's a right parenthesis. So we're going to say if s of i equals to a right parenthesis, then remember that we just need to, you know, sum up all the elements inside of our uh, right parenthesis and we can sum them because that's how we've been putting them into the stack. We put them in a way such that we can actually just sum the result at the end. And it's going to be no exception when we're in a parenthesis. So what we want to do is, you know, set our num to be zero because that's going to be the, the value of the numbers uh, inside of our parenthesis. And now we need to process it. So how do we know when to stop processing? Well, if you remember when we saw left parenthesis, we actually put the operation uh, into the stack, as you can see. And obviously this operation is going to be a string value, whereas all the other values are going to be our numbers here and they're actually going to be integers. So we want to process our stack until we hit the point where we see a string character and we know that we need to stop. At that point, we can apply whatever that previous character is, which is going to be the top of the stack because that's where we end our iteration. We can apply the value from inside the parentheses with the operation that was just before it to the value before that, and that will handle the actual parentheses. So we want to say while is instance. So while the value at the top of the stack is actually an integer, then we want to process those numbers. We want to say num is going to be plus equals to stack dot pop. And we're going to add all those numbers together while we're in, the, uh, while we have numbers to add, right? And obviously this is going to end when we hit this operation. So let's now get it out of the stack. So we're going to say op is going to be stack.pop. And now we want to actually apply our helper function to that operation and the number to basically add that to our stack in the way that we want it to. Cool. 
So now that we've done this, we need to reset our number back down to zero because now we've processed the right parenthesis and we can continue on as if we're starting fresh. And remember that the operation is just gonna be whatever S of I is because S of I is one of the operations and we need to keep track of that as we go along. So now what we need to do is before we can actually return our result, we actually need to process whatever the last operation was because remember that we're gonna end either on a number or we're gonna end on a right parenthesis, in which case we actually need to process those final numbers that we had um, because we won't have actually processed them if we just return at this point. So we're gonna say helper of op and num um, is going to be the last thing we need to do. And then remember, we can just return the sum of our stack because we've, set it, we've been setting it up such that you can just sum it at the end instead of calculating it on the fly, which doesn't work with this problem. So let me just make sure I haven't made any um, mistakes here and we can submit this and it runs. Cool, and it does pretty well. 96% of all Python submissions, 94% on the memory. So what is the time and space complexity of this algorithm? Well, like the other basic calculators, we do this in one pass from left to right. So this is gonna be big O of N, where N represents the number of characters in our string. And then space-wise, oops, space-wise, um, this is gonna be big O of N again. Um, we have this stack here, which is gonna be holding our results. In the worst case, our basic calculator is not gonna have any sort of parentheses. It's literally gonna be like nine plus eight plus seven plus six plus five, dot, dot, dot. It's just gonna be pluses. Uh, and then we're just gonna have to store all these numbers into our stack and that however many, however many numbers we store is gonna be dependent on you know the length of our string. So we'll just say it's a big O of N solution. So that is how you solve this problem. It's quite messy. I would recommend working through an example, uh, one of the ones that LeetCode gives you, maybe this more complicated one to see how it works if this didn't make sense. I think it's pretty intuitive on how you wanna do it. It is a little bit confusing if you haven't done basic calculator one and two. I would highly recommend you go back and do those because it is um, very beneficial for you. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. This video was an absolute pain to make. It took me so many takes. This question is really annoying to make a video on. Uh, it's, I wish I could just write the code and not have to explain anything because yeah, I just have a headache now. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and a comment. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm. If you want to see me suffer through more of these hard Google questions, then please subscribe to the channel. I have tons of videos for you and tons more coming out. Just subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the uploads. And otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully this video didn't give you a headache as well and have a great rest of your day.